Alright, what's up guys? Um, today, I'm going to be doing another fantasy draft for my league. Today, we're going to be the Lakers. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's see what pick I get. Pretty nice pick. Tenth. Tenth pick. Alright, so let's see who's still available. Point guard, we got Damian Lillard. Obviously, great pick. Um, Jimmy Butler, DeRozan, Thompson. Good picks. And Oladipo. Good pick. Uh, we got George. George has been killing in real life. We got Przingis still and Embiid. Jeez, some really hard decisions that I'm going to have to make right here. Hmm. So I'm definitely going to rule out probably the shooting guard position. Just because I don't think any of these players right here are worthy of a 10th overall pick. Jimmy Butler would still be available. DeRozan, maybe he would get picked a little earlier. But Thompson would still be here. Oladipo is probably like a 20th pick. So, Paul George, he would still be available too. Even though he's very underrated and he should be about a 10th overall pick. But he would still be available. Przingis would get taken. Embiid would get taken. Jochich and Cousins would be taken. And so would Damian Lillard. So, I'm going to have to rule it down to these three right here. Him and then Damian Lillard. Hmm. Well, in doing so, i got to ask myself, what point guards are still going to be here? Oh, Ben Simmons, too. Ben Simmons is such a great pick, and you kind of sleep on him. Just because they have him at point guard, so his overall is a little bit lower. But, like, come on. He's six foot ten, two thirty at the point guard position, and he can pass better than most of the point guards that are at that position. Like, look at this. He passes just as well as John Wall. That's that's nuts to me. Let's see what his defense looks like. His defense isn't bad at all. I mean, a it's it's not as good as the people around him. It's better than Damian Lillard's is though. Whew. And he know, you know, uh, Ben Simmons is thinking about going to the Lakers in real life, too. I don't think I can pass up this opportunity. I think Ben Simmons is a great pick. I mean, he he can do everything. He's a triple-double guy, you know, easily. He, he plays, like, he has the ability to be a good power forward and a good point guard. Like, that's that's crazy to me. I'm going to have to go with him. And he's on a two-year, $14 million contract, which I know, like, okay, who really cares about the money, Kay? But, no, if you're planning on making trades later on using your uh, My League team or for next year whenever these free agents come available, like Kyrie Irving, like I think Durant, you know, Clay Thompson, that comes into play. You could potentially get Ben Simmons – and another big player if you just wait a year or, you know, some of you might send me a year, whatever you do. I'm going to go with Ben Simmons. I think Ben Simmons is a great pick. So we got point guard. Now let's see what else is available. Obviously, all the older centers are still here. Um, power forward. We got some good young guys at power forward. Uh, Aaron Gordon. You really can't go wrong with Aaron Gordon. I mean, he does everything. He can shoot. He can dunk, like, ridiculously. He's fast. His defense isn't bad. Let's see. Shooting guard positions probably going to wither away. Jalen Brown is actually a really good pick. I'm going to play my cards and see if he's there next round because I don't think he's worth this early of a pick, especially when you still have guys like Gary Harris and Brogdon and Hardaway up here. Um, Gordon Hayward will probably still be there. Josh Richardson's a good pick. Um... I think Gordon's he, he's just an unbelievable player but if I want to be smart about this if I want to be smart like I said I just got Ben Simmons on that what was it two year 14 million if I play my cards right and I get another great player whether he be young or not for a good contract then that definitely opens the door for me like DeAndre Ayton right here, two years, 17 million. Now, he's probably not worth this pick. I could probably get him next round. But you got Sabonis on a one year. I'd probably have to re sign him. That'd probably be a lot of money that he would want because he's a good player. He's going to stay a good player. All these guys are on one 
Jaron Jackson, two-year, twelve million. He's a good player. He's only eighteen years old too. That's ridiculous. Josh Richardson for three years, thirty million is not that bad. Three years, thirty million isn't that big of a. Jalen Brown, two-year, eleven million. And then, like I said, Gordon Hayward's probably still going to be here. I'm going to try and get him if he's still here next round. Um, I'm going to try. So I'm going to get Brown. But the reason why I'm getting him not only is because of that contract and then moves I can do later on, but also because he's a young player and he's six foot seven. Now, the size matters, especially when you have a good cornerstone point guard who's 6'10 already. You get a 6'10 point guard. I'm about to get a 6'7 shooting guard. Potentially get like a 6'8-ish, you know, small forward. And then obviously all your power forwards and centers are around six, anywhere from 6'8 to 7 feet tall. Height matters in this game. It really does. So I got these two. I think they're both great picks. They're both scorers. They're both good on defense. Let's see if, uh, nope, Hayward's not here anymore. So let's see who else we can get. Meritich is a great pick. He's on a one-year $12 million, which isn't, you know, obviously you want guys to stick around, but if you have to re-sign them, then so be it. Jaron Jackson's still there for uh, that two million, uh, or two-year $12 million. Where's Bagley at? Bagley is right there. Bagley's also a great pick. Um, he's six foot eleven. Both of them are six foot eleven. But Bagley can get to the bucket a lot better. His standing layup and just regular layup are great. But look at that his speed. Eh, I mean, it's all right. Where's his other speed? Show me his speed without the ball. There it is. Seventy-eight. Now Michael Kidd Giltris is probably the only one up there with him. And uh, Parker. Parker gets hurt though. But you won't find anyone that cheap with that much potential. So I'm gonna go ahead and draft Marvin, uh, Marvin, Marvin Bagley, six foot eleven. So now I have three players who are above six seven, and two of them are guards. We have a power forward, a shooting guard, and a point guard. So let's look at that small forward position. I mean, it's wearing thin. Uh, I think if I wait a little bit more, Covington will still be available. He's on a four-year, $46 million, which is pretty expensive. If I do want to make moves to get like a Kevin Durant or a Kyrie Irving, I'd probably end up having to trade him to open up that cap space. Um, you still got Terry Rozier here too, but he'll probably want a fat contract whenever that year's up. Let's look at center. You have Serge Ibaka, two-year, $44 million, which is pretty expensive. Two-year, $21 million with Henson. Nerlens Noel is one-year, $1 million, but he'll ask for a fat contract too. So really at that at this point, like you're not going to find anyone with great talent that's cheap. Um, you, unless they're like super old and at the end of their career. Rondé Hollis Jefferson's a really good player, and he's cheap. He's one year, two mil, but he'll probably ask for a fat contract too. I think my best bet here is probably to go with a center. I want a center that can do it all. I want one that can rebound, score, and play stiff defense. And it looks like Serge Ibaka is that guy. His rebounding is pretty average. Cantor's rebounds ridiculous, but his defense is ridiculous in the other sense. He can't guard anything really <laughs> uh, I don't know this is a tough decision this is a tough decision JaVale McGee is really good he can get the boards somewhat he can box out <laughs> his defense is good though he can block the ball at 95 like, that's crazy and he's fast I mean he's 30 years old he's older his stamina is not that good but he's a good player nonetheless And then a small forward, Inglis, he's older, but he can shoot lights out. So can Bogdanovich. Bogdanovich is a really good pick. Um, he's only on a one-year contract, though. I'm going to try and stay with that that scheme of tallness. So, like, Covington's 6'9". Um, 
and then these guys are 6'8". I mean, it's not that big of a difference, but I want someone who can play big, you know what I mean? And Covington, he can guard basically any position on the court because his on-ball defense is really good, but he's 6'9", so that means he's opened up to power forward and under, basically. And his speed's not that bad. So I definitely want to try and wait for Covington. So I'm not even going to look at small forward anymore. We're going to stay to the center. And I think at this point, all of them are expensive. All of them are pretty decent. I might as well just go with the best one. Just go ahead and get Serge. Serge is six foot ten. I mean, he's not a seven-footer, but it'll do. Now we got to go ahead and get my man Covington. As you can see, second... I can't wait on on him anymore. I need a good defensive player who can lock down players when I face like LeBron or Durant or whoever it is. And he can shoot. So I'm going to go ahead and get him. So now I have my starting five. All of them are my shortest guy is 6'7". So that's really good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and look at the bench now. And obviously on every bench you're going to need that spark that can score the ball. Now there's not too many shooting guards. I mean, you have Terrence Ross right there six 6'7", but there's not too many shooting guards who are super tall. And obviously not any point guards. I'll probably, for a point guard, I'll wait for uh, Livingston. I know he's older, but Livingston can guard basically up to the small forward position. And he's a huge mismatch if you have an undersized point guard. So if you have a guy like J.J. Bure or D.J. Augustine or uh, F Van F Vliet, He's a mismatch for them because he can post them up. He has a good mid-range shot. See, 80 right there. Let's look at his post just out of curiosity. See, 72 on post control and then 73 on fade. Like, that's not bad for a point guard at all. So I'm going to wait for Livingston so I can keep that consistency of tallness throughout my entire team. Um, Chandler is 6'9". And I probably won't, you know, I have these 6'8s around here. Chandler's pretty decent, though. He's well-rounded. He can shoot the ball get to the basket obviously his defense isn't bad it's a 76 I mean he's not a bad player I need to take consideration stamina though stamina is always important and people under you know they don't look at it as much so like right here shooting guard Brown he's 80 I definitely should probably go after a shooting guard because he'll be the first one that's tired in the game that needs to come out like I said, I'm going to try and stick with that consistency of tallness. I might possibly, this is going to be a little uh, out there, but I might try and find a fast, yeah, probably Batum right here. I want to find a fast small forward who's tall that can like stay with those shooting guards, but he'll be a mismatch with his height. Look, his defense is pretty decent. Speed, eh, it's not that good. He's also very expensive. I didn't even look at that. Andre Iguodala is always a great pick. He's uh, very underrated. Kyle Anderson is not bad. Denzel Valentine's a good pick. And, I mean, he's slower. I, I don't know what it is. There's just some people that are just like, oh, yeah, I can score with him. And Denzel Valentine's one of those guys. His shooting's pretty decent. I mean, he gets to the bucket, you know. He gets free throws. Look, his speed with the ball is pretty good. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get Denzel Valentine. And I'm going to draft him early, obviously. He's going to be my sixth man because he's young. He's only 24 years old. So he'll he's one of the players that will go early. And he's only on a two-year, $5 million contract. That's a steal. I have to go with him. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert him over to shooting guard. So I have my shooting guard right here. Now let's see who else is available. We have Olenek. He's not super expensive. He's tall. Um, if I'm really going with height, I'd probably wait for Boban Marjanovic. Jalinka, he's tall. Um... I'll probably, oh, well, I don't know. I don't know who I want to get right now. I don't know what position I want to get. I mean, I have a good score, kind of. So I should probably go after a center or a power forward, you know, a big man. Burton's a 6'10", and he can shoot. 
he's lights out shooter. I mean, Jalika is a lights out shooter too. <sighs> decisions, 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 decisions. I'll probably go to the center position, and honestly, Tristan Thompson, he's a great pick. He gets the boards, I mean, just flat out. Offensive rebound, 95, you're not going to find anyone else better than that. Davis is the second best player for it. And, I mean, his defense isn't bad either. Let's go back to him. 76, 79, like, his speed's not bad. I got to go with Tristan Thompson here. He's kind of, uh, he's he's pretty expensive, but when it comes down to it, like I said, if I'm trying to get a Kyrie Irving or I'm trying to get a Durant in the offseason, that's a player that I can trade away. So right now, the expensive guys on my team are Thompson right here and Covington and then Serge Ibaka, which I would be able to keep one of them for a good contract, but all of my guys are over a year, so... Like, he will still be on his little, you know, what's that, $7 million a year next year. So, I'll have super cheap guys who are super good. Yeah. Let's go. Now, I think, would be the time to go to that small forward position. As you can see, it's starting to wear, wear thin a little bit. Parsons is 6'10". Um, yeah. Pretty much everyone under Parsons isn't worth going after. Iguodala, he's shorter, yes, but he can guard. He can guard really well. What I honestly might do, because his speed with the ball is pretty good, and his ball handling is pretty good, if I get Iguodala on my team, I might be able to just play him at the one. And then I'll still be slacking a little bit on that small forward position, but if you know how to do your rotations well, I could have Bagley come in at small forward, and then... uh. I can have Tristan Thompson be at the power forward when he's at small forward or whoever else I get at um, power forward. Like if I get Burton's, he can come in at power forward while Bagley plays small forward because Bagley's fast enough to keep up with whoever's at the small forward position. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get Iguodala. So I have some pretty good-sized guys who can carry the ball. They can dribble the ball really well, and they can bring the ball up the court. So now it's time to go after another big man. Um, Jalika is still here. I'm going to have to go with him. He's Like I said, I love power forwards who can shoot the ball. You know, they're tall. They're a mismatch because if they're out on the perimeter, that takes away one extra guy that's in the paint playing help defense. So shooting guard, potentially point guard. I still need a small forward, though. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm, I might honestly – well, Parsons super expensive. Tony Snell's 6'7". That's not bad. Let's see if there's any power forwards who can who can run the floor and play a, a little small forward. Not really. Sam Decker, maybe. Let's see Sam Decker's speed. Yeah, I mean, 75 isn't bad, honestly. Like, there's a lot of small forwards that are worse than that. I'm going to go ahead and get Sam Decker. And then, um, you know... I could potentially, tweaking the lineup a little bit, I could potentially put even Ben Simmons at that small forward position and have Iguodala at point guard. You know, it just really all comes down to how you have your rotation coming in and coming out. But I'm going to go ahead and get, um, ooh, Livingston's gone. So I don't have any good size. I mean, Teodishic, is that how you say it? I don't know. He's 6'5". Um, where's Michael Carter Williams? Honestly, I might just get him. He's definitely like a last pick. Well, Stone, he's six six. There's Carter Williams. He's six six too. Well, in that case, I'd probably just get Stone or Tio Ditch because it's only an inch and Tio Ditch can shoot. Tio Dosic, Tio Dosic. I think that's how you say it. And then Tyler Johnson, he's not a bad pick either. He, his layups are really good, as you can see. 90 and 86, but he's expensive as well. But he's only on one year, so if you just don't sign him back, you, you know, he'll pick up. He'll get picked up eventually. It'll be fine. Um, Justin Holiday, 6'6". Six, six. Uh, Jonathan Simmons, 6'6". Six, six. Crab, 6'6". Six, six. 6'7 for McCall. 
I mean, JR66, Garrett, Temple66. I'm probably going to go with Temple because Temple is a great shooter and he's a good ball orchestrator. Let's, where's his ball? See, his ball handling, uh, well, it's not bad, but he's faster, I guess. I'm going to go ahead and get Temple. So now let's go back to that point guard position. Um, I'm going to try out Teodic. I mean, he's cheap. He can shoot. He's older, sure, but, you know, his ball handling isn't, well, it's not better than these guys. But he has size on him. Let's see what his, his defense is. Oop, passed it. Ooh, his defense isn't that good. Deladova, though. Deladova is 6'4", too, so it's pretty good size. He's still, well, not really. I don't know who I should get. All right, I'm going to budge. I'm going to get one undersized guy, and it'd have to be a point guard. And honestly, I think it'd have to be Patty Mills right here. Patty Mills can shoot. He's super fast. He can lay up very well. You can't really go wrong getting Patty Mills. I'm going to get him. So he's my only guy on the entire team that's pretty short. So I got backups for every position. I got backups on backups. Just to keep with that size, I told you I'm going to get Marjanovic. No one can deny that we are the tallest team in the NBA. Hmm. All right, now it's about time for the young guys. I already have three centers. I already have a bunch of small forwards. Should probably look at that point guard spot. Let's see who's tall. Shake Milton. Who names their kid Shake? That's that's what I where did he come from? Southern Methodist. Does anyone know where Southern Methodist is? He can hit his layups. I mean he's average shooter. Average ball handling. He's better than most not passing, I guess. Defense trash, but you know, you know how that goes. This is a player that I'll probably never use. I just want someone who's young, has potential. Duval has potential, but he's only 6'2". Like I said, I want height. I want tallness. I want all that. So I'm going to go ahead and get him. And that's the end of my draft. I think we did pretty good. Like I said, it really depends on how you're tweaking your rotations. The way I plan on doing it is where I'm having these super tall people in at all times. You know, having Iguodala at the uh, shoot or at point guard position. Um... Valentine will definitely come in at that shooting guard position, and I'll move Bagley or Decker down to the small forward when I'm doing that. And then I can have Thompson or Serge Ibaka playing that power forward, and then have Marjanovic, uh, you know, man in the paint. So there's a lot of cool, interesting things that you can do with the tall lineup, especially with ones who are super versatile, like Ben Simmons, who can run with anyone in the NBA, like Jalen Brown, who can run with anyone, Igudala can run with anyone. You know, it just depends on how you're uh, planning on using them. So thanks for watching my video, guys. Um, please give me a like. Please give me a subscribe. Share the video around. Um, thanks for the support. And uh, have a blessed day, y'all.